we're here to review my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Just punish your war zone. I don't know why we're reviewing that, because it's an old movie, but whatever. Well, I know for myself, I watched it because I was on this Ray Stevenson kind of jag. So I'd watched another film with him, Outpost, and then saw that he was in this, so picked it up. <laughs> That's right, because he plays the Punisher. Yep. <laughs> this is the third Punisher movie they've made, uh, but this is the first one that's Marvel produced, uh, along with Lionsgate. Uh, well, actually, according to the emblem at the beginning of the movie, it's Marvel Knights produced, whatever that means. Um, stars Ray Stevenson as Frank Castle, who's lost his family. Uh, in this version, he uh, is a war veteran, mm -hmm. as opposed to the Thomas Jane version, where he was a cop who got tortured for 45 freaking minutes uh, before losing his family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's the Punisher. He's essentially a vigilante, and that's pretty much all there is to him, and he fights Jigsaw. Uh, not Jigsaw from the Saw series, because uh, Tobin Bell is actually a good actor. Instead, we got... Do you remember who played I Jigsaw? don't even remember the man's name. <laughs> uh, some douchebag with a fake Italian accent exactly. that really irritated me throughout the entire movie. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> it sounds like the sort of Italian accent you'd find in a Flintstones cartoon, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> All right, well, how did you feel about it? I was just looking for something that had action in it, so I guess it was okay in that respect. Yeah. There's lots of shooting. Hmm. There's stuff going on, but it's not a good movie or anything. Not by a long shot, you know, in terms of action. And I have to admit, I don't know if I'm giving anything away here, but I was really distracted by the fact that when he's uh, going back to his secret lair, mm -hmm. and I'm like, it's the Montreal Metro System! <laughs> Which kept cracking me up. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a funny point, because it is filmed in Montreal, and it's It's very obvious. And it's supposed to be New York, and yeah. it's sort of like they made no effort to make it look like New York. Uh, that's a good point you mentioned the metro, because at one point there's actually a subway train. And the subway train passes, and it doesn't look like a, um, a New York subway. It has the specific colors that only Montreal subways have, which is blue with a white stripe on it. Yeah. And no other place on Earth has that color for their subway cars. I know, and it was crazy because even though they tried to blur out the signs telling you the destinations, you could still read them. <laughs> so that's I true. Thought it, There's one I, place I read the word Place Dame. Yes, yeah, that's true. and I was, I was just thinking, my goodness, this is so Montreal. <laughs> it's hilarious. It would have been fun if they maybe they had decided to toss that out the window. I was like, you know what? Frank Castle goes to Montreal. <laughs> Said it in the early 90s. He's taking on the biker gangs. I'm not sure. He's trying to flee a backdoor draft. <laughs> so clearly you don't like the movie, but you don't think it's that bad. Well, you know what? As far as Punisher goes for films, part of me feels like you really can't do all that much in any case. Maybe I'm wrong in this. I remember my introduction to Punisher uh, many years ago now. And at first I was intrigued by this idea of the vigilante because you can't really condone what he does. I mean, perhaps in some respects you might say, okay, well, he's just, you know, taking out the trash, you know, getting rid of people who are only working to the detriment of the city and society as a whole, right? So mm -hmm. I guess you could say, okay, that's a positive. But people do get caught in the crossfire as his own story tells him that. His family did, right? So, yeah, well, actually, uh, Warzone in particular actually has a pretty interesting twist on it, which yeah. was, I think, one of the best part of the movie, which is that he ends up uh, killing a police officer undercover. Yes. Uh, which is something that would happen in such a context, and that exactly. he's actually feeling pretty tortured about that. That's true. That is a good touch, and I was actually going to bring up the fact that he tries to make restitution to the family mm -hmm. because now he realizes that he's endangered their lives by his actions. Restitution's like what Obama's planning? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's why I can't condemn the movie outright as being awful or anything. It's just, it's not great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't pretend that it is. But it had okay elements, and I did actually like Ray Stevenson as Frank Castle. He looks so much like contemporary drawings of the Punisher. Yeah, it was He looks weird? exactly like them. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of funny. I thought he actually fit it very well. Mm. So that's a plus for me. Um, so you brought up an interesting point where you, you're not convinced you can do anything with Punisher, which is weird because they've tried three times now. Every time they have to reboot the franchise because the previous time didn't work. Yeah. And I agree with you. You can't make a good Punisher movie. And mm -hmm. I think for me the reason is that the Punisher was brought into the Marvel Universe in, what, 1968, 1969? It might have been 70, I think. Yeah. 
as a Spider-Man villain, not even a good guy. He's a villain. Mm -hmm. And he was pretty much Marvel uh, integrating uh, all the vigilante characters from the 70s. Well, you know, Charles Bronson's Death Wish comes out right away. So it was pretty much Marvel taking a character from movies and putting them into the superhero universe. Mm -hmm. So when you take that Marvel character and put him back into movies, really all you end up with is a cheap knockoff of Charles Bronson's character. You're not bringing anything new to cinema. And the only thing that's different about Punisher is that he's fighting superheroes and you can't even bring that into the movie because yeah. the studios don't have the rights to all the characters and you can't have him fight the X-Men and all of that so what are you left with? Absolutely nothing that's particular except that he has a big skull on his chest mm. making him a particularly easy target. Yes, I find it interesting that no one ever aims for that. <laughs> it's like, it kind of glows in the dark people, really. <laughs> Having said that, I actually think this is the worst one yet. I hate this movie. I don't just dislike it, I hate it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, I agree. He's a morally ambiguous character. You're never going to have a squeaky clean moral in these movies. But there is this point where every cop in that bloody city seems to be agreeing with his brand of vigilantism. Every cop is in on it, which is really weird. But that's not what really offended me. What really offended me is that how openly racist this movie is. All the bad guys are either visible minorities or they speak with really thick accents so that you know that they're not, you know, born in America. Mm Mm-hmm. And the only non-white good guy is the black cop that shows up uh, yeah. early in the movie. And even then, well, well, first of all, he has token black men written all over him. Mm-hmm. But also, they even established that in his past, he did some crooked things and that he's trying to redeem himself for. So it's sort of like, okay, every black man is crooked deep down, I, I suppose, because there's yeah. no positive non-white character in the movie. It's true. Like, unless you're basically a wasp. Kind of white, yeah, because Italians yeah. come under fire. Uh, Africa, Russians, Russians, right? The next group was are they? Uh, well, the Hispanics also. The Hispanics, yeah. Well, there's one good guy gangbanger, but he's also an ex gangbanger. Exactly. He's Hispanic, therefore must, must have be been a, a gangbanger. Gang. Yes, it was. I found that interesting. Yeah. Uh, every minority, yeah. which you would see represented by New York City, basically they're eliminated by the end. Well, yeah, and that's what I wanted to lead to, because yeah. it's even worse. It's because Jigsaw, the bad guy, before the final battle, he has a recruiting drive. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the most offensive things I've ever seen, because what they do is they parody a uh, recruitment drive for the army, where he's standing behind the American flag and starts recruiting gangs from everywhere. And his speech is like, well, you know, they don't accept us because you look different. The shot cuts to the black gang. Mm-hmm because you speak different and they cut to the Russian gang Mm -hmm. uh, and because you can't behave like everybody else and they cut to the Asian gang and it's Mm -hmm. like how racist can you get and this whole thing is under the American anthem and behind and it's sort of like recruiting his league of evil essentially Mm -hmm. and it's sort of like the movie is saying I find quite openly that the problem with crime in America is immigration yes and it made me vomit in the back of my throat just a little bit Mm -hmm. That's actually an excellent point. It was something that had crossed my mind. It was so strange, though, because it's you think to yourself, well, this is an incredibly diverse city. It's founded out of its diversity. So the idea that the criminal elements are entirely made up of minorities and that you have this one shining white figure mm. <laughs> uh, kind of coming in to clean house is disturbing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only squeaky clean good guys is the family of the cop that died and yeah they're they're very white (laughs) they're not just white; they're suburban white exactly i could see why this would be the worst one i haven't seen all the punisher films i saw the one with dolph lundgren and Hugh gossett jr yeah well ironically that's the best one yeah it did turn out to be the best because i saw that and i've I've seen warzone i haven't seen the thomas jane yeah it's really bad by the way i used the word ironically accurately (laughs) <laughs> One would not expect Dolph Lundgren movies to be the best of anything. I but mind you, he did have Lou Gossett Jr. there, <laughs> so True. to True. help balance it out. That helps. And the filmmakers did remove the silly white skull. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's also that weird theme of uh, God versus atheism that shows up in the movie, which I had no idea what the hell that was about. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Because they established that Frank Castle almost went to the seminary. Yeah. And uh, he's constantly struggling with, like, there is no God, there is a God, and atheist characters tend to be the good guys in the movie. And then at the end, there's a final shot that really confused the crap out of me, 
where um, he shoots a final bad guy and then the screen kind of fades to black with the neon cross behind him and it's written Jesus saves and the word Jesus disappears and all you have is the blue cross with the Punisher and the word saves and he shoots. It's a pretty shot, I'm not going to take mm -hmm. that away from it, but it's the sort of shot that is pretty in a way that invites you to think it means something and for the life of me I can't figure out what the hell it means. Oh, well, yeah. Uh... You've got me there. The fact that you still have this religious symbol behind him would be very suggestive. But the fact that Jesus was taken out of the equation, is he proposing that they need a new type of savior? Or maybe not a new type of savior, but an old type, the much more vengeful. Well, so considering there's a terrorist plot in, in this Punisher, which is odd for a Punisher movie. Yeah, I almost forgot about that, actually. Uh, which probably leads to, you know, current wars going on in, in the United States. Are they saying that the forgiving way of Jesus is done for? Let's blow the crap out of the Muslims? Exactly, yeah. Let's put in one more uh, ethnic uh, reference in there. Yeah, no more turning the other cheek. It's now time for the sword. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we can say much more about that. Well, I, guess, <laughs> I don't know about you, but... I was watching this, and like a large portion of the movie is dedicated to Jigsaw's origin and little plots and whatnot. Him and his brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it just me, or did it feel like a remake of 1989 Batman by Tim Burton? His progression was exactly the same as the Joker in that movie. You're quite right. Because, you know, it was strange. I was watching it, and I kept thinking to myself, why does that seem familiar? And I, at the time, I couldn't figure out what it was. Or I thought maybe it's just because, you know, he's a very stereotypical character. I thought maybe that was it, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. He gets disfigured, he goes nuts, he laughs all the time, he takes out his old crime boss. Yeah. I mean, he does exactly everything that the Joker does in a Tim Burton movie. Wow! I guess they ran out of ideas. It's like, let's just regurgitate this. <laughs> yeah. Except he's an offensive minority. That's just a yeah. Nice that's the twist. only yeah. difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, rating. Um, I would probably say a D plus. I wouldn't recommend anyone rent it. I did because I happened to like Ray Stevenson and I wanted to see how he did as Punisher. But uh, it's not okay. a good film. Mm. There's a lot of problems. Okay, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give our first F. I really found this movie's racism so offensive and it's subtle enough that it's going to get into every fanboy's fragile little mind mm -hmm. and it's going to lead to exactly the sort of bigotry you find on the DC message boards right now especially if you like the Punishers because you have a, a aggression in you that you want to see fulfilled in some version of some way I mean that's the point of the Punisher character mm -hmm. and this movie is essentially making sure that that aggression is aimed towards minorities and I have this huge problem with that I know we've already said this, but I do find it so odd that they keep bringing back the Punisher character. Mm. Because uh, I think to myself, if you can relate to that character and to his actions, I think there's a problem. Well, part of it, I mean, and I guess enough. it's how he takes out his punishment, who it's being meted out on. You know, because part of it is wish fulfillment, and I don't have mm -hmm. an issue with that. It's a little bit weird and off-putting, and it, which is the reason why Punisher has never been my favorite character mm -hmm. for the same reasons you mentioned. But I can accept that a teenager with a lot of pent-up aggression would not necessarily relate but find interest in terms of wish fulfillment mm -hmm. in a character that can express his aggression outwardly. The character of Wolverine pretty much has the same appeal. Yes. The difference being that Wolverine tries to fight that impulse and Punisher just revels in it. And I can understand teenagers going to that without becoming violent themselves as mm -hmm. kind of an outlet. It's just... In the comics, it's fine as because he's putting his aggression towards, you know, super-powered monsters mm -hmm. and, and super-powered gangsters. None of those people are super-powered. I don't know, in comparison, the gangs, they actually don't seem all that powerful. Because if they were as competent as you'd figure the average hitman actually is, the Punisher would be dead a long time ago. It is yeah. true. I always found that odd. <laughs> There's an early scene where he's uh, like swinging from a chandelier from his feet and shooting in a circle. Yeah, I was like, how could no someone not have hit him by now? I know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> sort of like at this point you're shooting fish in a barrel. It's, it's really hard to miss the Punisher when he's doing that. Yeah, yeah.